Hey there, Booty. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're here to talk about Mother to Mother by Cindy Wimagona. This is one of the books that we chose to read in February for the Run Right Reads Book Club. If you're new to the channel and you haven't heard before, there's a book club on this channel. And the videos, sometimes they're late. This one definitely was, and I'll explain why. But if you're new to the channel, first let me say welcome and thanks for being here. I've prepared a card that shows the books that we're going to be reading this year. So it's available in my Etsy shop. You can click the link in the description box if you'd like to get one. Most of the books that we're reading in 2019 are books that have won the Man Booker Prize. And the selection for February was The Conservationist by Nadine Gordimer, who's a white South African author who wrote a lot about the times that she lived in, which unfortunately included the period of apartheid. And since it was Black History Month in February, and we're reading a book that was written by a South African who's white, I thought it would be good to balance that perspective off with a book that was written by a black South African. And so we found Mother to Mother by Cindy Magona, a black South African woman who wrote this story after a real life event. She fictionalized it and wrote this thrilling, stimulating, emotionally conflicted story. And so this is a book that we're discussing today. I'm sorry, I'm trying to show this book, but the screen and the glare is not great. Mother to Mother by Sineo Megona is a novel, but it is part letter, part journal entry, and part historical reflection as the main character brings us through the history that her people have endured, finally settling into this place in South Africa called Guguleto. It is inspired by real life events because in 1993, a young American white college student, a Fulbright scholar named Amy Beale, went to South Africa to work to help liberate natives as they were preparing for their first democratic elections. And I'm sure in her heart, in her mind, she thought she was doing something good. And she probably was. There are a lot of people who have gone to parts of the world where there's been violence and where there's been oppression and work to help free people or to help them get established so that they can get the rights that they deserve as human beings. Unfortunately, however, Amy Beale was in South Africa. And on the day when she was scheduled to return to the United States, she had an encounter with a mob and she lost her life. Ironic because she probably was killed by the very people that she thought she was helping. So Magona's novel is a first person narrative where we meet a woman named Mendisa, who's the mother of one of the young men who's been accused with committing this crime against this young woman. And in this novel that takes the format of a letter, Mendisa is writing, reaching out across the waves, across time, across emotions, across boundaries, all the boundaries that exist in her life, reaching out and writing a letter to the mother of the young woman that was killed. So Magona's novel is a first person narrative where we meet Mendisa, his mother, and she brings us back tracing history, her own timeline, going back to her own childhood, and even the history of her people where they have endured decades and centuries of oppression as their mineral rich land has been stolen and they've been tricked into believing that if they wait or if they sacrifice enough eventually the people who have invaded and taken over their land will be expelled and she gives this history of violence and the rage that it has cultivated she gives all of that to her son Zolisi who's the young man who has been accused as being one of the people who killed this this woman and she gives this history as kind of an explanation of why her son did what he did, but also of why the society has allowed these situations to occur. Why the society has led to mobs being formed and why there is racial tension and why it was dangerous for this young woman to be in Guguleto in the first place. Not necessarily speaking so much about the act that was committed, but about the the barriers that have been formed and what explains it, what was the precursor to this mob scene. So Mandisa's story and indeed Zolisa's story and all the stories of all the people from Guguleto is shared as a letter being written from one mother to another, from the mother of the young man who may or may not have killed this young woman to the mother of the female victim explaining in some way that this young woman, as terrible as the situation is, has been sacrificed for the history of the white oppressors and what they have done to these black natives in South Africa. Mandisa paints both Zolisi and the character that is based on Amy Beale, even though she doesn't name her, she casts both of these young people as victims. 
the young woman who has been offered as the virgin sacrifice to atone for the sins of her forefathers who went to Africa and settled there in the first place and robbed these natives of their history and their legacy, but also painting her son as a victim, kind of as a messiah type, sacrifice for his people. And what he has done is inculcated all the rage that all the people have burdened under and suffered and have allowed to build up in them that her son, the victim who has given up any hope of a life that he would otherwise have had to carry out this act of vengeance, almost as if he was the warrior who was sent to fight on behalf of his people. Regardless of your background and whatever political biases you may start reading the book with, it's also a novel that has the capacity to teach, to bring awareness, but also to evoke feelings of empathy and possibly even rage on behalf of the characters who are here. And not necessarily for one or the other, you might just feel rage at the situation that was created. Author includes some little known details about the real life stories of these black natives in Africa, about the forced removal of an entire people from their mineral rich tribal homeland to the erection of substandard townships in these ghettos that were formed. The sacrifices made by the natives in their desperate attempts to reclaim what was theirs and what they had lost through trickery or fear tactics or sometimes by sheer brute force and the history of hundreds of years of rage that simmered barely beneath the surface as they waited out the settlers who had robbed them of their land and their failed attempts to regain their inheritance and their previous way of life. Within her attempts at explaining the crime, Mendisa, the fictional narrator, traces a timeline that starts in her household and goes back in time. So she starts in her house on the morning before the crime was committed, the morning that saw her getting up and leaving her own children unsupervised as she went off to work in the household of the rich white people who employed her forcing her almost in order to provide for her family to also ignore the needs of said family and go off to cater to the whims and fancies of these rich whites and what that must have been like her children growing up seeing their mother going off to work for these white people but also resenting them for taking the mother and taking their protector away she also mentions two periods of exile one where her people left their home and were forced to go inhabit these substandard homes in Guguleto, but also a period of childhood exile where she was forced out of her home when she started becoming I guess womanish and her mother was afraid that she wasn't able to supervise her and sent her to live with another family member. She also linked that to the exodus of her people from their tribal homes and what it was like for these women who did not have male protectors. These these women-led families are often the ones who didn't quite benefit because they didn't have a man around as their protector. And within this part of the story, Mandisa paints herself as this kind of virgin mother who her son, the Virgin Mary son, became the Messiah. And so she really plays up this idea of herself as a virgin mother and her son as being the representative, the lamb, the sacrifice for his people. And there was a little bit about that that irked me because Zolisi, in sacrificing himself, also sacrificed other people, which for me is not Messiah-like, but I'll leave that for later. Interwoven within the time travel that the author brings us through, however, she really describes this harsh existence and the desperation that is evident in every layer that she unfolds. A desperation that was born out of helplessness and that in turn bred a generation that progressively hated their oppressors even more. The book includes descriptions of native culture and shows a lot of really rich examples of the history like tribal hierarchy and arranged marriages and deference to traditional rules even when they produce disastrous results. But almost separate from the complex historical story that Magona offers to her reader in this book is the emotional response to Mendisa, the fictional mother, reaching out to the American mother and offering her a shared grief that I imagine the American mother would reject. 
In her letter, Mandisa, mother of Zulisi, offers understanding for the pain that the American mother is feeling because both of these mothers have lost their children, one through death and one through a change of life and circumstances that you'll never really recover from. And yet I could understand if the American mother was even more angry at receiving this letter. I imagine her ripping this paper to shreds when she received it because even in this story that is easy to understand from an intellectual perspective, Mandisa does not at any point apologize for Zulisi's actions. As a matter of fact, I don't think she can. In fact, Mandisa is bold enough to suggest that the American mother probably got the better end of the deal because while they both lost their children as victims of violence, and yes, victims, that at least the American mother doesn't also have to deal with people questioning her parenting or saying that she's the reason that this thing happened. And she doesn't have to think about how she failed her child or how her child failed her. I imagine that this would make the young woman's mother very angry to read. And the suggestion that she be comforted by the fact that Amy wasn't raped or robbed, but instead she was offered as the virgin sacrifice for her people before her. So as sympathetic as I felt towards Mendisa and even Zolisi in some regard, I didn't feel like any of this justified what happened. That was my thought. Other than that, however, other than the story, the book was extremely well written. It was pregnant with meaning and emotion. And I got as engrossed in the story as I think it is possible to get when you feel conflicted, when you're not sure how much you like the characters. But overall, I credit Sindewa Magona for producing this book. I am amazed that this woman was able to write and capture a history in such a profound way. In a small book, I read an electronic copy from the library and I loved it. This is a book that I would like to own and share with other people. And I definitely want to read something else from this author because much credit to a woman who grew up in that history, in that time, because while she is sharing the story of Mendisa, this fictional mother that she has created, she's also the product of that time that she is describing. And the fact that coming from those circumstances, she was able to produce this novel that produced such conflicting emotions in me. Much credit, much kudos to her. And so I'd love to hear from you. I'm sorry this video is going up so late. I tried to record it. I recorded it. I edited it. I tried to upload this video three times, maybe even more. I tried to upload it from my phone. I tried to upload it from my computer. Nothing happened. So my apologies for not being able to share this video for a while because when the video was due, I was traveling and I wasn't able to re-record it. And so I hope that now that I'm back, sending this video, even if it's a little late, is enough of a concession. This is me trying a tactic that I learned from Mendisa in Mother to Mother. So I'd love to talk with you in the comments. If you read this book with me for the Run Right Reads book club in February, let me know if this is a good way to share with you if you'd rather we open up a forum on Goodreads or should I post the videos earlier so you can comment and have a conversation with other participants. But thanks for being here, thanks for joining, thanks for reading the book along with me. I'll be back with another video where I'll discuss the other book that was written by a South African woman and that is The Conservationist by Nadine Gordimer. Expect that video tomorrow. And if you'd like to get one of the cards where I share the books that we'll be reading this year, then Check out the link in the description box. Let's talk in the comments. And until next time, happy reading.